One side. Now, right here, they're telling us we're going to do both of these problems as x approaches 2 in the instructions. So, if you pick numbers that are bigger than 2, because if I, what happens when I plug in 2? I get 0 over 0. So, we definitely have an issue at 2. So, anything bigger than 2, what's going to happen? It's going to be at 1. Anything less than 2, we're going to be at negative 1. Negative 1. So this is, a, this is what we talked about the other day. What they will do then is they will ask us some different questions. They can go, they can go limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side. What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side? They can say, what's the limit as x approaches 2? They could say, what's the limit as x approaches 5? So I'm going to give you about a minute. I want you to look at those different things and with somebody next to you, discuss the graph. Now, when you see 2 from the positive side or 2 from the negative side, that's what they mean by a one-sided limit. As you get close to 2, but you're coming in from the positive side of the x-axis, what are your output values approaching? Two from the negative side. That'd be the negative side, the negative x. You're moving in from the left. What are your output values approaching as you get close to the two? That one and that one. So do all four quickly with somebody sitting near you. Discuss them, and we'll see what we get. If I approach 2 from the positive side, I would be here, I'd be here, I'd be here, I'd be here, I'm here, I'm here, 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 here. What are my outputs? 1. As I approach 2 from the negative side, I'm going to be here, then I'm going to be here, then I'm going to be here, then I'm going to be here, 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 here. Negative 1. But this is why you have to be very careful that you look at this. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes... Uh, the notation on exams or worksheets, it can be kind of small. So look for it. Look for the one-sided limit. But what happens if I ask you to consider the limit of 2? That means you're coming in from both sides. Does not exist. Because now, one of my fingers is on the line up here. One well, down here, and as I trace them in, my fingers do not come together. They're in separate spots. What happens if I ask you to approach five? Because everybody assumes, oh, it does not exist when they see this problem. But if I ask you to approach five, now that's out here, and I'm here, 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 I'm here, here, here. They'd be coming together. It'd be one also. So please pay attention to what they're asking. Yesterday, there was a, a homework problem on the worksheet where it had the asymptote at negative 3 and a hole at negative 2. If I ask you to approach the negative 3, there would be no uh, limit because as it hits the asymptote, one goes up, one goes down. But at negative 2, you are actually running into the hole, so the, your fingers would want you to come together. It's just we can't get the value from where that is, so you'd either zoom in or go to the table. A piece, uh, x plus 2. So x plus 2, only when your inputs are greater than 2 is what I was telling you. So 1, 2, there's my input of 2. When I put 2 in there, I would be at 4. I'm going to use a solid dot for that one because it can be greater than 2 or equal to 2, so we put a solid dot. Now, <coughs> as I move to the right, I pick inputs greater than 2, and I keep going out to the right. 
my graph has a slope of 1, so it's just going to continue on that line. And if I do that one, x squared, U-shaped graph, right? Yeah. Over here, it's going like this. At 1, I'm at 1. And at 2, what's going to happen? It would land right on top. So these two actually are overlapping. The red and the blue graphs are touching. They're overlapping. them. So what happens as I, what's the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side? What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side? What's the limit as x approaches 2? Not linear. Oh, sorry. Okay. What's my limit? Four. 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 Oh. Can you show how you got that? Yes, I get it. If if I'm going from the positive side, you start with inputs larger than 2. So that means you're on the red line. Trace the red line in as you get closer and closer to an input of 2. Where is it going? 4. four. Yeah, it's going to 4. What happens when you plug in 2? 2 plus 2 is 4. That's its location. Yeah, that is its real location. Make sense? Yeah. Negative 2, I would trace the blue line in there, but it also goes to where the hole would be. But in this case, the hole wants to be at 4. And from both sides, because they overlap, we actually, they run into each other. This could be a whole different graph. Just watch. Hang on. So I'm going to do the same graph, but what would happen if the linear switched to, um, let's make it x plus 4. Okay, look at this graph. I switched the linear to x plus 4, so it's moved up a little bit. So as you come into 2 from the positive side, you'd be moving in from the right-hand side. You're tracing this in. It is coming to 6. From the negative side, as you move in to 2 from the negative side, it is 6. <laughs> But as you come into two from both sides at the same time, oh, look, it does not exist. <laughs> that would not exist in that case. We did back in chapter one the difference quotient, and you guys were not very good at it. No. But by the time we get to chapter 12, I think you guys uh, are a little bit better. So, I'm giving you a function. And I'm asking you to work with this function. And we're saying do this. So I want you to put 1 plus h into the function. So it would be like 1 plus h gets squared minus 1 plus h. I did the very first thing right here. I said 1 plus h was going in to my function wherever you see the x. The x is the input variable. So drop 1 plus h in for all the x's that you see. Are you good? Then it says, then it says, then it says subtract the function when you've plugged a 1 into it. So we would, we did this, we said, okay, really separate it out, square brackets or big parentheses, whatever. Um, 1 squared minus 1. This is all over h, 
And what you're doing is the limit as h goes to 0. Okay. Now, can you see how we plug it in? Yes. Questions about how we plug it in? No? Good. Okay, here we go. Limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus 2h plus h squared. If you take that 1 plus h and you back uh, foil it, 1 plus h times 1 plus h, you get this. Distribute the negative sign here, I get negative 1, negative h. Over here, I get 1 minus 1 is 0. Right? 1 minus 1 is 0, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing out there. So, it's all over h. I see a 1 here that I can cross off, and I see a negative 1 that I can cross off. So I'm looking at the limit as h goes to 0. What's 2h minus an h? h. So I have h squared. 2h minus h leaves me with an h. If you say that enough, it starts to sound weird. I don't like saying weird. Limit, limit, limit. Um, what's the limit as h goes to 0? Factor the h out now on top. All over h. Cross it off. So you got to factor it out. And now we're looking at the limit as h goes to 0. Oh, wait. Oh, no. oh, I can't. Oh. Oh. That's a one, people. You gotta yell at me when I do that. One. Now, that's the first time. Before that, you have division by zero. If you try to do a direct substitution, you'd always have h on the bottom. It wasn't until after you factored it out and crossed it off. Now, when you plug it in, what's left? One. <coughs> This is leading us into the difference quotient, which is how we can calculate derivatives, which we'll do yes. more of that tomorrow. But um, keep going on your work. No. <laughs>